What's going on, guys? Tyson Anderson, Mr. Hammer Down. Listen, no pins, guys. This is the outside or the outer court of where I come and run dogs all the time. This is the area I call Briar Country. Now, if, if, this is a, if this is considered a pen because it's got a chain across it, this is the wide open road. Uh, nobody hardly comes up here because it's, a, it's the country. I mean, there's, there's nothing really there or here for anybody to come down or any reason to travel this particular road. So what I usually do is either park the truck here or I have someone uh, lift this, you know, this part here up, but that's it. It's a deer hunting property uh and then here comes a car but here's a this a deer hunting property that a buddy of mine a good friend of mine has and it's about 500 acres here and uh i'll just go slightly around the corner right here because this is not uh what this segment is here you know it, right here is about but i'm just showing you guys the trail that goes all the way around and there's his deer hunting stand and literally it goes i'm talking way 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 up there um and it begins to just be thick as all get out but yeah it's it's pretty freaking thick so but that's not what we're talking about today guys we got something else in the store whoa so guys what i want to talk about today was this i wanted to talk about giving those dogs a proper chance now mind you the road is right here and i usually walk on down into this particular spot or property and uh i want to say a lot of guys have uh had right much to say uh so it's been brought to my attention on the different ways or different um opinions of how they bring a dog on as far as coaching those dogs talking to those dogs and so forth some people believe in just cutting the dogs loose letting them do their own thing there's nothing wrong with that but let me ask you this question the same thing goes on with that of a child that if a child goes to school and they make good grades you reward that child. You affirm and confirm the goodness that that dog or the good tendencies, the good, the goodness, the, 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 the uh, appreciation, all of that. You, you know, you, you want to reward that, affirm that, confirm that you did good little Johnny. You did good little Sarah. You did good, you know, whatever. Why is that so important? Well, Pastors understand it as they pastor a general congregation, even down to the individual within that congregation, right? Teachers understand it. Good teachers know how to teach a class all the way down to the individual within the classroom. Then coaching. Coaches understand it. From coaching a team to coaching the individual. You have to be multifaceted in order to do that. Now, let me explain something to you guys. Oh, let's point out this. Some say, well, I, you know, all that walking through the brush and stuff and this and that and blah, 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 just ain't going to do that. You know, something. Let me tell you something. Some of the greatest dogs that people have ever, ever attributed to the sculpting of beagling. Here's where you need a history lesson at, guys. And it's okay if you don't know, you just don't know. Ignorance isn't anyone's fault except the individuals if they haven't challenged themselves to sharpen what once was ignorant and to round it off into ever learning. Now, if that is the goal that you are after, kudos to you. But if you're not ever learning, then some things you can't speak on until you actually get all of the information and realize I don't know what I'm talking about. And what I'm saying is premature. Now, one thing I want to say is this. A lot of people aren't understanding or don't understand that some of the main dogs that guys have attributed to being some of the greatest godfathers in beagling or dogs in beagling started off, they wouldn't even deal with a rabbit. They were just house pets or, 
you know, they, they, uh, they thought this and they had great expectations of this dog and they just would not make the cut. Well, guess what? They gave those dogs time. They gave those dogs all of the space they needed to let the line within that dog persevere. Certain lines are gonna take off quick. Certain lines are gonna take off late. Now me, I'm in the fast lane. I don't have time to wait on dogs. These two dogs have been working, Robin and, and Hurricane are a prime example. They are of my line. I bred those dogs. They are the littermate brothers and sisters to Anderson's Black Bart and Sissy, Anderson's Briar Country Jackie. Why don't those, dog, why don't those dogs hit the briars like that, Tyson? I'll tell you why. One, they were started later. They were very, very lightly started, one, which is what I like, but then they were set up. My friend and brother has had other obligations. I'm only using this to give you an example. So people would see me walking through the brush and those dogs not doing a whole lot well. When little children take over a dog, until you have children, you don't know, but when those little children take over a dog and they begin to deal with that, that dog, deal with that dog, deal with that dog, that's the, that child's dog now. You're not gonna strip that dog away from that child. And that dog has been wearing lipstick and eyeliner and all mascara. Nine times out of 10, that dog's became comfortable in a comfort zone that he or she has not ever known and what happens is their mindset of rabbit 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 becomes that more of a more docile submissive nature right that doesn't so much as focus on the center point of rabbit 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 but more so pet 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 michael jordan is a great example he's a goat in my eyes one of the goats one of the greatest of all times. And, and I look at his history. I'm a historian, I love history. When I look back at 1978, in Wilmington, North Carolina, whoop, whoop, Laney High School, Pop Herring was the coach. Do your research. Pop Herring saw a young Michael as a sophomore and his friend is either Lee or Larry Smith. I can't remember, it's been so long. Well. Pop Smith, I mean, Pop Herring has never, Coach Herring has never recruited a sophomore to play on the varsity team except one, and that was Michael Jordan's friend, close friend, Mr. Smith. As a sophomore, he was six foot and some change. Michael was a then five foot, I think, 10 or 11, right? And he just didn't have what it took to make the varsity team. Well, and then Pop never recruited, uh, you know, sophomores anyway. Well, why is that important, Anderson? I'll tell you why that's important. Because Michael Jordan given the proper chance anyway. And you see, one person's trash is another person's treasure. What Pop Herring failed to see in Michael Jordan, a uh, young Michael Jordan, an unfundamentally sound Michael Jordan at that time, Dean Smith saw what he did not. Dean Smith is a trainer of basketball. Pop Herring is a trainer of basketball. There are levels to training. He trained at a college level. Pop Herring trains and trained at a high school level. High school coaches may not see what the college trainer sees. Professional trainers may see what the college and the high schooler and the a uh, 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 AAU coaches don't see. That's why they're professional, right? Well, here it is. Four years later, this same unfundamentally sound or underfundamentally sound MJ is drafted or called or uh, given the to, uh, tuition to, or scholarship, excuse me, to UNC Chapel Hill, Tar Heels. Whoop, whoop, by Dean Smith. He sees in Jordan what Pop Herring did not. And he gives him a shot. I happen to like my cigars when I train, by the way. And the funny thing is, he sees these things inside of this young man that he's going to eventually be a great individual if we want to go even further back to uh about around about the same time of mike tyson 
some years difference of Customato seeing in this young prize fighter who was once a thief and a robber and a drugger and a drug user and what people said was a rapist and all of these different things psychotic individual and and all of these things a, a a mundane mind and all of those things right but now he becomes the heavyweight champion of the world as he says right custom auto saw it in him as a trainer it is up to you to get it out of them if that's not enough story tyson who else can you have what else do you have to back up those are just a couple well think about miss vicky bassett all those hurry up fans that love hurry up you need to do your research if you don't like a dog that does this and do that and you don't want to go in the brush, you don't want to talk to them, you don't want to confirm and affirm those, those, those small children or children like in uh, four-legged creatures, guess what? You're not going to like the story of Hurry Up because she'll tell you out of her own mouth, and this is why I pay my kudos to Miss ba Miss Bassett, I salute you, ma'am, I salute you. Even though I don't run the blood, I salute you and what you've done. Hurry Up Lady, do your research, guys. A spoiled mind is a terrible thing to let rot. Terrible thing to waste. Hurry up lady, she acquired, I think for a few hundred bucks. She had to give you the story. I don't have all the details or the specificities of the situation. Well, she buys a dog or is given a dog, however, she's, however the dog is accumulated or acquired. And she takes this dog that some say is not gonna be this and this and that, just an average Joe Blow dog. And she takes this dog to high heights deep depths, uh, depths, and she stays consistent with this even to now, 15 however many years later. Kudos. Because she at that time became a Dean Smith. She wasn't a Pop Herring. She saw more than Pop Herring, who was the trainer and the owner of Hurry Up Lady before she got her Dean Smith mindset and hands upon Lady. What you hear is passion, not anger. Because I want to correct the mindsets of people thinking that you don't have to get in the brush and talk to dogs. You don't have to get in the brush and work dogs. It's affirmation, guys. It's confirmation, guys. You made a good shot, they get a pat on the butt. Hey, guys, good shot. Way to hustle. You've never seen a kid go out there six, seven years old playing peewee, and you just sit there like this and let him run up and down the field, up and down the court, up and down the ball field and you never say anything to them. That's the most mundane, unsensible thing I've ever heard. I never heard of that, but to each his own. All I'm saying is give those dogs a chance. Some of the greatest dogs in history that has ever got behind the tail of a rabbit and pursued them unto death was sorry dogs in the beginning. Some of them had natural knacks. They were natural deer broke dogs. They were natural this, they were natural that. But some of them, hear me, they had to put the work in. And when they put the work in, the reward stood up. It emerged out of the ashes of the pop herring mindsets. Don't be like that. Know the fundamental difference in how to bring a dog about. We forgot about more training methods than most have learned and read in a book. I can't remember how long ago, but I believe it was the year of 1990. I got my first beagle. And 91, 92, I believe it was, might have been 93, I got my first registered beagle from Frank Reese. God rest his soul. He was a beagle man. I remember going behind and walking behind certain dogs that he had. Now he would tell my grandfather were cold starters. And some of those dogs didn't start till they was a year. Where some would kill them. Reese would give them an opportunity to prove themselves because he would always say it's in their bones. They come from good bones. They come from good bones. Even though there are such things as duds in the bones and within the bone yard, give that good boned dog, meaning good infrastructure, there was, there was good foundation underneath that dog. 
give it the opportunity that it needs. If that means you tear a, a pair of chaps, that's one thing. But a broke dog, no chaps should be broken into. No chaps should be pierced. No chaps should be scratched. No chaps should be tore and wore down because the dog is broke in breaking an everlasting thing. That dog is going to take you to different heights and depths. If you're a true dog man, you'll do whatever it takes to bring the best out of that dog. Give that dog the chance it needs. Give it proper affirmation and confirmation in the field that it senses that passionate anointing to development, uh, to, to develop that dog, to bring it on. Let that dog sense a traceable amount of that developmental anointing that passion of anointing to teach that dog the fundamental differences of a coal and a rabbit dog. Trust the bones and every now and then go back to the bone yard. Thank you guys for all of these organic subscribers that we haven't paid or shared on any other page, any other social media site. I thank you for your followership. I thank you for uh, allowing me to continue to share and express my passion with you guys. Listen, I can only be myself. Tyson Anderson, Mr. Hammerdown, put some respect on it. I'll see you when we take back to training. Almost forgot, guys, a very vital piece of information. Michael, here he was, an unwanted Pop Herring prospect for the next year. Four years later in 1982, a then Dean Smith is given an opportunity of brilliant reliance or to, to display brilliant or his brilliant reliance and confidence in a more fundamentally sound Michael. He hands him the ball, 1982, where Michael was at one time just the videographer carrier of equipment for James Worthy and Sam Perkins. Now they're up against J Georgetown and he's being given the ball from Dean Smith, a trainer of trainers, who sees a certain sparkle in Michael's eyes. Help me, Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm going to give him the ball in his mind. He tells Michael in the huddle, you get an opportunity of an open shot, take it. Take that game winning shot. Take that buzzer beater. Michael probably didn't have the confidence to do that then. But here's the take. He had the confidence now because of the hand not physical, but the verbal hand of affirmation in the field, which was basketball court. Field, the basketball court. Get in the head, get in there, get in there, find him, find him. Hawk, 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 find him. That's him, that's him. Take the shot, Michael. Hawk, take the shot, Michael. Gave him the affirmation he needed in the field to take the shot, and boom, freshman wins the NCAA Basketball Championship. Think about that. There's so many verbal affirmations that you'll miss the opportunity of transmitting and transferring for the case of sheer ignorance because you do not know and you have not tried. Don't mismanage the material that you've been afforded to have, folks. I want you guys to really take and soak this in. Soak it up and try it for yourself. You'll see. You'll be all right. Trust within yourself. Verbally affirm yourself so that you can affirm those dogs. You'll see. You'll see.